Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Hi, preschool peeps. Hi, peeps. We felt compelled today to talk about uh, what is going on around masks, COVID-19, and early childhood, child care centers, young children in, in public schools, all that stuff. Where Allison and I live, the decision was made that all children, including child care where the children are not vaccinated, can get rid of the masks, that the numbers are low enough and things are good enough that they don't need to be wearing the masks. No matter how you feel about this, I think this episode can be relevant because we're not going to concentrate on the mandates themselves, which by the way, if I drive an hour away, it's different. And if I drive an hour away, they decided children under the age of five still need to wear their masks because they're not vaccinated and over the age of five, they can get rid of them. So we're going to be talking today about those children in the preschool years, maybe even bleeding into like kindergarten, first grade, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to just be concentrating on how the children may need support, may get confused, how they may feel. Because again, however you feel as an adult about children being masked or not masked is your prerogative. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you can feel however you would like. We're not commenting on it. We're not judging it. And we hope people won't comment on it on our social right. media or on right. YouTube. That's yes. not ever why we're here. We're always here to think about the children, how they perceive things and what help they may need. Yeah. Okay. So right. when I think about this, children who either their whole early childhood or the vast majority of their early childhood they were taught when we go out or when you go to your early childhood program, you have to wear a mask. Now yeah. suddenly being told, you don't have to wear a mask. I was speaking with someone yesterday who uh, said she wasn't sure how her own children uh, were going to react because it's just such a part of their routine to grab the mask yeah. and put it on. It's just who they are now. And I was related to that. I read a very interesting article from a place not so near us, but has already said that children don't need to, to wear masks, that a, it was written by a teacher. And it was talking about how the students in her class, the majority of them were scared without their masks, wanted their masks, kind of like a security blanket, Want, right? wanted their masks, got scared when she said, it's okay, you don't have to wear it. Um, were upset if their parents didn't send them with it. They were like walking in, like mommy said not to bring my mask and they were scared. It's like you're walking into a place naked now. You yes. feel very exposed. Yeah. Yes. And, and she decided, this teacher who wrote this blog article, decided that it was just going to take time for them yeah. to, and that she needed to give them some power to say to them, okay, you're, you have your mask, you want to wear your mask. Um, that's okay. And when you're comfortable, take it off. Don't mm -hmm. we do yeah. so much of that with young children? When you're comfortable, yeah. come over. When you're mm -hmm. ready to tell me what to put on the chart yeah. paper, come tell me. When you're ready um, for other things, when you're ready to move on to puzzles, go ahead, right? Right. This is not something that you have to like rip the bandaid off really quickly. You could ease into this as you feel comfortable. You know, you don't have to force them to be like, nope, we're not wearing masks. The mask mandate is over. It's just, no, you're not comfortable. So you're, you're able to still wear it. And when you like, like Cindy said, when you are comfortable, we'll still be here for you. And then you can do it, you know, and right. there might be periods during the day that you still don't want to take it off, you know, and that's okay too. It's so interesting. Another teacher I spoke to this week was telling me her children are in the early childhood years, but elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, I think first grade, third grade, maybe. Okay. 
and never they been were in school without it then yeah right they've <laughs> yeah. they've pretty much you know they've spent a couple of years they don't really remember much of yeah. being without it uh, also in that family uh, they had someone who died of covid so the children are terrified yep. that everyone around them is not going to be wearing masks and that someone else in their family is going to die that's that hard yeah that's hard because even even they going to school choosing to wear it everybody around them is not and that's where the fear comes in well there also, there's also you know the potential for um bullying and um mm -hmm picking on each other different. and it can be a, yeah. just like it's been divisive among adults I think it can be very divisive among children too and you know children they don't filter out what they say directly to your face either no. at yeah. all they don't wait to get on their social media to ridicule people they do it right there in the classroom just do it yeah. <laughs> yeah um so she said this teacher said in her family you know someone had died of COVID and the children were terrified and they actually looked at her and said, well, I want to wear two masks now. Okay. That's so she said, okay, yeah. you can do what you're comfortable with. You yeah. don't let anybody tell you what to do. That's part of, mm -hmm. of growing up is that we don't let anybody tell us what's, what's right or wrong for us. And you, and she right. basically said, you do what, you know, feels most comfortable to you. Um, I feel like that is a very good lesson. What this person did this, like, this is your choice. You're doing what's right for you. And you don't let anybody sway your decision yeah. on that because that's what you want to do. And then those children are going to grow up to stand up for certain causes that they believe in and not be afraid anymore it's because they learned lesson. it here. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's a life yeah. lesson. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, there are going to be, I think, and this is me just, here's my knowledge of how children think and what I think is going to happen. You're going to have some children, of course, who are just gleeful at not wearing their mask yeah. at school. Yeah. You're going to yeah. have some children who are going to be like, I want another mask. You're yeah. going to have children, <laughs> you're going to have children in between who take it off and put it on and take it off and put it on. And I think whatever the children feel, just like we follow their interests, we have to follow their feelings with this. Yeah. And I hope that uh, families look at their children and say, you don't have to wear this anymore. What do you want to do? Yeah. Let right. The choice be up to them. If they're old enough yeah. to make that choice. If they're not old yes. enough to make that choice, that's another thing. Yeah. You may notice children looking around nervously. Uh, I spoke with another teacher. We had so many conversations about this in the past week. Yeah. I had. I spoke with another teacher and he pointed out. He said, the children have never seen me without my mask. What do you think they're going to think if I take this mask off? And I said, they're oh, going to be shocked, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be shocked. I said, here's what I think is going to happen. They're going to stare at you. They're not going to know what to do with you, that information. And my advice to you, if you take your mask off is to talk a lot because they'll recognize your voice. Yes. Yeah. I said, if oh, you're taking it off, Think you have to of that. You yeah. have to start. I said to I said to him honestly. My advice is bring a mask, start talking with start it on, and then just it. slowly yeah. take it off in the middle of a sentence, like yeah. so that they, there's a continuation of what they're familiar with, which is your voice. Yeah. But I hadn't really thought about that until he said to me, "What are the kids going to do? They've never seen my full face." I never thought of it until you just said it. <laughs> okay. Like, I never thought of that. That it might be scary just yes. to not know the faces that you're looking at. You've only ever seen half, right? Kids used to be scared. <laughs> kids used to be scared of, of costume masks, right? If some yes. kids, some children, yeah. if you brought them to where there was like some sort of character, cartoon character, somebody wearing yeah. a mask, even, yeah. even people with beards would scare some young children yeah. because you're covering yes. the face, right? Yes. I was yeah. one of those kids when I was a kid, I didn't like men with beards. The beards. So yeah, I didn't like, beards. I was like that as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it used to be that children didn't like when faces were covered. Now you uncover your face and they're going to be like, huh? They yeah. may stare at you. Yeah. They may be a little hesitant. They may stand back, not all of them, but some of them. And if they withdraw, if they stand back, if they look a little frightened, 
soothing voice. Yeah. Right. And you can point things out like, look, I have a chin just like you. And yeah. I have a mouth just like you. Look, here are my teeth. Yeah. I have a nose just like you. And I think we're going to have to do with very young children that sort of, I'm going to touch my nose. Can you touch your nose yeah. and point out the similarities between your face and their and face? Their face. And I think you could do like, kind of like, remember how like when the firefighters visit schools and they put all of their gear on so the kids know, and then they yes. slowly take it off and be like, look, and the kids, some of the kids get scared because of all this gear and they slowly take it off. They're like, look, I'm a human being too. I'm a person too. So maybe like with the masks, you could do the same thing. Like here I am without it. Oh, look, no, see, now it's back on that. See, see how I look the same as you have always seen me, you know? And then maybe just go back and forth a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find I, out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the more people I spoke with this week, the more they were like, wait, they, they might feel this way or they might do that. Here was yeah. one of my major concerns with this whole thing. It wasn't necessarily now. Yeah, it's Maybe not, perfectly no, fine it's... now to say yeah. to kids, you don't have to wear the mask. But here's my concern. What if the same basic thing happens next cold and flu season as happened this cold and flu season? What if we end up with something, a variant or something that rate that increases the COVID numbers to the point at which yeah. the CDC says masks back on? Because that is part of what the CDC said. The CDC said the masks aren't necessary if you are at a certain level. But if place, there's an yeah. outbreak, if the levels go up, if blah, 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 we may have yeah, to reinstitute masking. Mm -hmm. What if we have to reinstitute masking? So children now don't do have to mask, don't have to mask, do have to mask. I think that that I can be like really tough. The level of confusion for them is going to be really really high. I think even this is going to be just taking them away because all of a sudden it's like one day you need it. It's like in this state, Sunday, you need to wear your mask. If we go to the store Monday, you don't. <laughs> and as a kid, I'm thinking like, well, what's different between yesterday and today? I feel like that's really confusing. Like adults kind of know like, okay, whatever. But a kid's like, wait, but yesterday I had to wear it. I don't understand why now she's saying I don't have to wear it. And then what, like three months from now, we're going to be like, yeah, remember how three months we said you were fine? Starting tomorrow, you're not. <laughs> you got to wear it again. You know, like it's so confusing. It's confusing for me. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. It what, yeah, it's like what it's made, this magic, for date, me. made this magic date that all of a sudden I'm safe not wearing a mask. <laughs> it's a little frustrating for me. I was speaking with someone about the fact that last spring, when the numbers went down and people were being vaccinated and we felt mm -hmm. so much more free and safe and whatever, you know, all these things, I felt so happy. I, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. I can yeah, go places. Good. I can do it's things. It feels so good. <laughs> things are looking up. Yeah. This is gonna... And then it took a hard left. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Hard yeah, left I into like Omicron. Well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this year, as they're saying, you don't have to indoor mask, you don't have, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I'm far more reserved about it. Yes. I'm far more hesitant about it. And uh, someone's, I said to somebody, it feels so different this time. And she said, because we know what could happen. We lived it last time. We lived it. We're living and learning right now. We are. Yeah. So we know what yeah. could happen. We don't know what's going to happen again. Once the the summer is over and we enter what is probably going to be cold flu and COVID season. It's certainly my hope that eventually, and maybe next winter, COVID can just be treated like any other, like the flu. Hopefully. That would be yeah, lovely yeah, if it was sort nice. of at the level of flu in threat to people. Yeah. We still have people who are more immunocompromised than others at higher risk than others. Yeah. That may stay. And everybody has their own considerations during this time. So right. people who decide to remain masked now, you know, we just sort of have to respect that. For yeah. young children, I think if you have things in your classroom, like pictures of people wearing masks as part of your visuals in your classroom, or you're using visuals that have people wearing masks, I don't think you should totally take them down no, and abandon I would, them. I would keep those up. 
Yeah. I would keep them up for a very, 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 very long time. I, I, would, I don't even know if there's a, a point in getting fully rid of them ever. There's nothing, you know, because I think at this point now people for years might be wearing a mask for the reasons you stated. They might be immunocompromised. They might have a family member that's at risk. I think we're always going to have masks here on a little level. So why take that away? Like uh, yeah, let the visuals be there so that when they do encounter somebody in public that's wearing a mask at the supermarket, they're not frightened by it. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, I think in some capacity. I mean, even for me, when I think about flu season or stomach virus season, I'm sort of like, eh, it's not going to hurt me to put on a mask and try and stay a little yeah. healthier. Yeah. Yeah. And it should be personal choice like that. You know, it's yeah. been personal choice like that in Asia for a long time. A long time. Yeah. Asia, in like Asia, if they don't feel well, they put on a mask. They if they're going to be in a, a situation mask. where they're worried, they, they put on a mask. Yeah. They've when they're using mass transit. COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. Before COVID-19. They Anytime they feel at risk, they put it on. I feel like that is what should happen here. It should be your choice. If you feel well, at risk. I feel a lot of things that don't happen, Allison. I know. But what I'm saying is let that be that person's personal choice and stop, you know what I mean? And just let it happen. And, but like for the children, like if there's going to be people out in the world that make that their personal choice to wear a mask, we need to let them know that that is okay and normal. So keeping these pictures up and the books or whatever it is that you have now, it's important to keep that in there. As important as it is when a child says, I want my mask. Right. To let them to let experiment, them make choice. Yeah. let them experiment with having the mask on and the mask off, and let them. When, as soon as they're old enough, I think they should be making decisions like that for themselves. They mm-hmm. should learn at a very young age that they have autonomy over their own bodies. And mm-hmm. as a family, if you don't want the masks, you masks, you can keep telling them it's okay to take off your mask. You can do mm-hmm. that. Um, it's all right. And if the child says, I want my mask, I think the response should be something like, okay, you know what? Why don't you bring it? You can wear it when you go. And then if you feel comfortable, take it off. It's okay to take it off. Mm -hmm. A lot of places, even places that are still masking indoors for the young children, especially the ones who cannot be vaccinated, they are unmasking outdoors now. So the children may have a little experience with on and off, but again, it's only been off outdoors on yeah. indoors. indoors, yeah. And adults may interpret it as, well, they've spent part of their day without it. It'll be fine. Young children cling to comfort things. It's what they yeah. do. You know that. They have stuffed animals they love and blankets they love and mm. shoes they Clothes love and that food they, like they love, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Food that they only yeah. want. They cling to things they really, that help them to feel secure and they may cling to this. Yeah. And that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Let them come to it on their own. And hopefully they won't have to go backwards once they do. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Hard to say. Yeah. It is hard to say. Yeah. Let's go find out. So it related to this episode and this topic. We would love to know how your students react. Not political opinions, please. Yeah, please. No, <laughs> no, we're not going to keep those comments there and we're not going to respond to them. Uh, yes. Just how do the children react if you are in a place that says no more masks in childcare or no more masks in this public school building, if you, that's where you work, yeah. or if you're yeah. the agency you work for, anybody says no more masks for the kids. We would love to know things like were any of your children concerned? Did any of your children... Yes. Uh, wanted on their own. Now, I recognize that there are families who are going to say, I still want my child masked. That's happening, by the way, throughout our state. There's this division of families contacting schools and programs saying, I still want my child masked and people contacting saying, nope, my child doesn't need the mask. And people have all sorts of permissions and all sorts of systems and documentation. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's a little chaotic where we are. Uh, the people listening who are administrators now are like a little chaotic. Okay. It's chaotic. It's chaotic. (laughs) Um, But uh, you know, children on their own, that's what I'm interested in. Children on their own. How are they reacting to your face? How are they reacting to the fact that maybe their family said they don't have to wear it, but they're like maybe a little hesitant. 
how many of your students just took the thing off and were fine? That's yeah. what I want to know. Okay. So yeah. again, without yeah. your personal opinion, please. Yeah. Just send us what happened. It's kind of like taking observations down for assessment of children. Just yeah. what you see with your <laughs> eyes you <laughs> and yeah. hear with your ears. Yeah. That would be great. And yeah. you can go to our website, howpreschoolteachersdoit.com and send us a contact form. You can go to Facebook and send us a message. If you would like to give us permission, if we decided to include this in a feedback five, which we do occasionally, please uh, let us know if we can share the feedback and if we can share your name and location and what we're allowed to share. Yeah. 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 Okay, folks. So uh, wherever you are, whatever the mandates are, deep breath. Yeah. Patience, <laughs> yeah. Mix of visuals, yeah. letting children learn to feel comfortable, um, encouraging children to be kind to each other, no matter what every family chooses, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What a yeah. world. Yeah. Can what a world we live in. I know, <laughs> yeah. I can't. Who would have thought it? Nobody. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Deep breath, people. Strength, strength. You can do this. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> we'll, we'll catch you next time. Bye, peeps. Bye, peeps.